six months since they raided his two homes. And so they really wanted to get this on the record, right? And get this, get the ball rolling with this case. But that does not mean that others had not, had not been charged or had not been threatened to be charged in this case. So yeah. I do believe that they will be, that charges will be forthcoming with others. And I absolutely do believe that people had pled out and really cooperated with the, with the, uh, the prosecutors. prosecutors. Yeah, the prosecutors saying the investigation does keep going. They're asking him. That's very important. By the way, shout out to this lawyer who came on to try to explain. I, 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 I think, you know, um, I, I seen someone else say that, it, you know, what Bradford Cohen said it on Long Crimes, it's a possibility that maybe Diddy's co-conspirators are now unindicted co-conspirators where they have flipped on Diddy and they have taken some deal, maybe some immunity, maybe some, you know, um, um, they have some type of protection where they won't be pursued, but, you know, they have to cooperate. Th that could explain why we're only seeing Diddy charge right now. Obviously, the possibility of a uh, superseded indictment is still on the table, and um, that's just one of the things that we, we're going to have to see what happened. Uh, really quickly. Joining me now is former prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst Kristen Gibbons Fedden. She famously helped prosecute the case against Bill Cosby. MSNBC legal analyst and former prosecutor Christy Greenberg prosecuted sex crimes as an assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. And NBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin is with me here on set. Let's talk about the charges, and I think related to the depth of them, um, is that we just learned the defense is proposing a $50 million bond in an attempt to get their client released. Well, I think the fact that they're proposing a $50 million bond speaks to how serious the charges against Sean Combs are. So let's go through them from top to bottom. The first is a racketeering conspiracy charge. And I'm sure when some of our viewers hear that, their eyes glaze over. But essentially what that means is that Sean... By the way, it appears that we might have our own guest. Okay. Okay, Bradford Cohen is going to be um, um, on shortly. Uh, we'll probably get Myron on as well. I would love to get them both on at the same time. I just got to tell Myron's a little bit fucking slow when it comes to uh, <laughs> to, to like technology. But because but, but, Bradford Cohen does Zoom, if I could get both of them on Zoom, it'll be perfect. We get an agent, a top defense attorney. At this point, who else would we need? You have a, oh, we would just probably need like a former prosecutor. No, actually, we don't even need that because the fucking lawyer is going to do all that. What else will we need? I want to get like the super panel of like experts that I could just chill and just ask questions. I like doing that. Sean Combs built an enterprise consisting of his businesses, but also of personal employees and people loyal to him to help him uh, basically accomplish these sex crimes with which he has been charged. And not only did they help him accomplish these sex crimes, they did a bunch of other criming with him, according to prosecutors, in order to cover it up or to keep his victims silent. He's also been charged, Chris, with sex trafficking under force or coercion or transportation with the intent to engage in prostitution. And critical to the allegations are the severity of the violence alleged, use of guns, forced drugging, arson and kidnapping all alleged and suffused throughout not only this indictment but the detention letter that prosecutors sent to the judge today where they outline in 16 pages why sean combs should not be released from federal custody prior to his trial that's why you see sean combs and his lawyers saying hey we'll put up a 50 million dollar bond package consisting of a 48 million dollar home that i own outright and other things so, Kristen, I want to play some of what we heard earlier from prosecutors. This office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. So to me, honestly, Kristen, that sounds pretty straightforward. But then I read the indictment and um, the level of depravity that's just alleged there, that's described there. It's certainly nothing I've ever seen, but you have the experience. Put it into context for us. 
Yeah. So what happens is, you know, and I think one of the things that's interesting, Chris, and he was actually asked this at the uh, press conference about, okay, if you have this indictment that outlines this depravity, how is it that just a year prior you give him the key? How is it that we didn't know that any of this was going on? And one of the things that I think is really important is that Throughout the pre-detention letter that Lisa was alluding to, they talked to, I think they said they gave around 300 grand jury subpoenas, spoke to around 50 victims and witnesses who are able to really substantiate or corroborate one another with the allegations that are set forth in this indictment. So I think one of the things is, well, then how did this go on so long? But you have to remember that sexual assault, particularly when it's against someone as powerful as Puff Daddy, particularly when you have the fac facilitation of some type of intoxicants, you're talking about ketamine and all of those drug fueled parties. And then you go up against someone whose reputation is such that he was awarded the key to the city. You have a very large power imbalance, which further levels onto that coercion and further forces victims to be silenced. So that level of depravity, even though it's so horrific, can really cause it to be silenced when you have someone as powerful as Puff Daddy. Yeah, Christy, to be honest with you, again, when I read through it, it was like, how did this go on for so long, again, allegedly, um, and no one spoke up or, I, I mean, there have been other cases in the past related to, to him, but I, let me ask you what you as someone who has prosecuted sex crimes at the SDNY, what stands out to you in the indictment? So one thing I would say in prosecuting sex trafficking cases, oftentimes they are undetected for decades like this one. I unfortunately have prosecuted sex trafficking cases that have gone on for decades. And a lot of the reasons why the victims don't say anything earlier are even when the facts are different across cases, the ultimate reasons tend to be the same because these traffickers know that they can instill a culture of fear. And that culture of fear really prevents them from speaking up. Here you had force, you had violence, you had uh, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams saying that these victims felt they could not leave because their own security was at risk if they did. And there is actual video evidence of that when one of the victims was trying to leave a hotel room trying to leave one of those freak offs and what happened sean combs violently beat her that is on tape so to the extent any juror any member of the public questions well why didn't she leave you can see the evidence of why she didn't leave sooner it's right there on tape i will say that in terms of looking at this indictment and looking at the detention letter that was submitted by the prosecutors here, this is among the strongest uh, sex trafficking cases I have seen wow. because you have the conduct on tape. These freak offs are on tape found in videos in Sean Combs own personal devices. You have recorded calls where he is then trying to have them and engage in a false narrative to conceal his uh, the evidence of the crime. Once it was determined that the law enforcement officials were looking into this. That evidence is damning. In addition to having the victims coming forward and corroborating one another's accounts, the fact that you have video. Did they say the strongest? Shorty's going in. For any member of the public questions, well, why didn't she leave? You can see the evidence of why she didn't leave sooner. It's right there on tape. I will say that in terms of looking at this indictment and looking at the detention letter that was submitted by the prosecutors here, this is among the strongest uh, sex trafficking cases I have seen because you have the conduct on tape. These freak offs are on tape found in videos in Sean Combs own personal devices. You have recorded calls where he is then trying to have them and engage in a false narrative to conceal his uh, the evidence of the crime. Once it was determined that the law enforcement officials were looking into this. That evidence is damning. In addition to having the victims coming forward and corroborating one another's accounts, the fact that you have video evidence they can see and hear Mr. Combs threatening and hurting victims, I mean, this case really seems incredibly strong. So given that, given the details, given the strength of the case that the prosecutors say they have, Lisa, 
what will the judge consider if they offer this $50 million so he can be free while this case is going to trial? Well, you know, as Christy and Kristen know well, the dangerousness of the individual to the community, as well as the likelihood that they will and have the capacity to flee, are two factors that a judge considers. One of the things that Sean Combs' lawyers have told the judge is acknowledging that he owns a plane. They say that there's a letter of intent to sell that plane, and as part of that, he won't won't take the plane right now, but where you have a defendant who owns private aviation, the capacity to flee is there. The other thing is that the dangerousness of Sean Combs should not be underscored. In addition to the allegations of literally hitting, dragging, kicking his victims, I'm reading from the detention letter now, there's an incident where he and a co-conspirator kidnapped an individual at gunpoint to facilitate breaking and entering into the residence of another. Approximately two weeks later, according to prosecutors, co-conspirators then set fire to that individual's vehicle and that multiple witnesses would testify to the defendant, meaning Sean Combs, bragging about his role in destroying individual one's car. This is not a white collar defendant who has committed a alleged securities fraud. This is a person who is a danger to the community and a danger to women, according to the Southern District of New York, Chris. So we have less than a minute, um, but let me ask you, Kristen, what happens today? What happens next? So today the judge will most likely determine whether or not he will detain Puff Daddy. All right, or all right. we get to understand what that is. Wow. God damn. Um, we're clearly still in the state of shock. Lar uh, Harvey Levin. I'm going to thank you very much. Not as some breaking news. We are expecting some sort of news conference, I believe, in less than an hour from New York. But what are you... Narcotics offenses, arson, bribery, um, drug charges, including uh, during the raids, they found oxy, GHB, ketamine, cocaine, MDMA. They found AR-15s. Um, there is clear reference in this indictment uh, to that Cassie video where she was brutally beaten uh, at the Century City Hotel by Diddy uh, in March of 2016. They mentioned that prominently in this indictment. Also, they mentioned these freak off parties, these sex parties that Diddy had. And they say that he had pressured women into having sex with male commercial sex workers, um, freak off parties, which they say he often recorded. So mm -hmm. there are just a variety of charges here. Um, his lawyer says not only is Diddy not guilty, his lawyer says he's innocent when he walked into the courtroom. Um, and like you said, the U.S. attorney is going to be laying this out. Uh, at 8.30 our time uh, in a news conference. Harvey, the, the arson charge that you mentioned, is that in any way connected to the uh, when he allegedly blew up someone's car in a driveway? It could be. Um, the only thing they reference uh, with respect to arson uh, is that it, it occurred in California. Mm. So we don't know, but it well could be. TMZ also reporting on a cryptic post from Aubrey O'Day, who was a member of Danity Kane, which is one of the pop groups that, that Diddy put together. Yeah, I don't know, Melvin, that it's cryptic. I mean, we interviewed her uh, for our documentary, and um, she, she is thrilled that this indictment came down and said more to come, and there would be women coming forward. She has spoken with some of them. And um, this is a day she has been waiting for for many years. I know it's so early in this, but, but given the, the heaviness of the charges and, and how <laughs> many charges, federal charges he's facing, what does this mean for possible jail time? Decades, decades, decades. and decades in prison. Um, right now, the big issue is, will he get bail? Um, we're, we're told he has surrendered his passport and... Um, I think they're doing that to show he's not a flight risk because they're trying to get him bail. We will see. And even his attorney, I believe, said that, that Diddy had gone to New York knowing that this was coming. Yeah, I mean, it was really clear uh, this was coming. Now, we were told um, that this was supposed to happen today. And for some reason, the feds accelerated it and did it last night uh, in Midtown Manhattan. 
I don't know whether they found out he was going to leave or what, but we're told it was supposed to happen today. And what about the implications for what's at stake here in the state of California? Well, it's a good question whether California would file charges. I don't have the answer to that. I have no idea uh, whether the DA is looking at that. Um, but I will tell you, when you read this indictment, um, they threw in the, everything, including the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. In this indictment, these charges and the allegations go back decades, even back to the 90s, right? Yeah, I mean, they're saying that he was in a conspiracy with his group to do all sorts of things. Um, and again, they lay out you know, bribery and all sorts of allegations, some of which involve violence toward women, um, but also involve money. Um, they say that this has been a decades long criminal enterprise. That's essentially what they're alleging. Which brings to, to mind the, the issue of perhaps statute of limitations, especially when you consider chat. So while you've been watching that, you know me, I'm trying to see what's going on, what's going on. I'm looking at all the chicks Diddy used to fuck. Anybody saying anything? Any baby mamas? Any kids? Nobody saying shit. You know who just deleted their Instagram? I don't know if, you know, somebody can fact check me on this. I don't know if it was deleted before. But you know whose Instagram is, is deleted? Shorty here, bro. So she's out of here. Okay? Gina Hua. Her Instagram you know, remember I played her like not too long ago, like oh, like a week ago. I said, yo, she's like, she's starting to, I see why. Remember I was like, yo, her twerking ain't good. Remember she was twerking on the gram, right? She's, she's socials off. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. By the way, this is her page. Currently, if you look it up, unless she blocked me, I'll look it up on my other account. <laughs> Maybe she blocked me. I did clown her. Yeah, maybe she blocked me. Let me look up on a, on a burner. <laughs> Y'all be roasting these chicks, and they'll hit me with some, like, shit. They be tight. Now, maybe she just blocked my account. But but this is not even my real account that I use on stream. Gina Hill. Nah, she's out of here. She's out of here, people. She's out of here. The house of, the house of free cough cards is crumbling. She's out of here. Um, I, I, I don't know what this means. This could mean she's a potential witness, a victim, or she could mean, nah, that's my sugar daddy. Fuck y'all niggas. I'm blocked? Some people said I'm blocked. Nah, I think she out of here. I think she out of here, Jay. I'm going to read donations in a second. Everybody who donated... I'm going to read that in a second. By the way, hey, sorry for the shameless plug. I, I don't ask y'all for much, but I do want y'all to, if you're if you're following, um, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the hit the subscribe button to the page. We're trying to get to a million followers on, on the King Academics, trying to get to half a million on um, the Academy. If you're following on Twitch, please subscribe. If you're following on Rumble, please become a member, okay? Uh, the last thing I will say, shameless plug, I'm sorry. I don't like to do ads, but we just dropped our new line, okay? If the you don't gotta donate to me, you don't gotta do anything, but if you could cop something from the merch store, really appreciate it. The Academy shop, uh, that is the only thing I have to offer to y'all. Other than that, I'm 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 very happy with just your time. But we got some new shit on. Um, we just released. I love this shirt right here. I'm about to wear it next week. Um, got still got a compromise shirt out here. You know, shout out to my boy Kenny. <laughs> we got an air freshener for your whip. Got a mystery box. Uh, got a keychain. You need that scorpion keychain right there. Got the shirt popping. You know, we got some shorts, varsity jacket, little trucker hat. We got y'all, man. Okay. This is um, our new drop. Please go go support if you can. Okay. And also, we got, I think we still got a chat nigga hoodie on. So go ahead if, if, if you could support. All right. Otherwise, it's okay. I, I value your time and I really re respect that. Uh, so yeah, Gina V. Hill. <laughs> am, I, am I saying her name wrong? Gina V. Hyo. Is that, am I saying her name right, Chad? Hyo. Yeah, she's out of here, people. Now, what we do know her for, and this is the thing, they're saying Cassie's victim number one. We get that, but let's go to Gina Hyo. 
she did an interview back in the day where she was exposing the shit out of Diddy. Right? Listen to this. I'm wondering why this is not included. She did an interview with Tasha K saying that, yo, Diddy forced me to terminate two pregnancies. He was putting the beats on me. Like, again, the feds need victims. They need witnesses. How is she not a part of it? But maybe she is. She just hasn't been named yet. Um, regardless, she disappeared from social media. As to why she's, you know, telling her story, because when we spoke the other night after the video went up and it went viral, everyone was shocked. Like, whoa, Diddy has a new girlfriend, has a new boo. You guys were like tongue kissing. Wait, I'm blocked? Why y'all keep saying she's still on IG, you cabin? Check Janelle Monet. Somebody said, actually, oh, I'm blocked. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, I clowned the Turk and I'm uh, twerking. I'm black. A am I blocked? Real talk? No way I'm not blocked, bro. She on Instagram? No. All right, hold on. I got to go on an extra burner. They got us open a tab on incognito mode. Is he gonna load? I think I'm blocked, y'all. I think she already hit me with a wild block button. Y'all hear Pluto upstairs crying like a bit? By the way, Pluto about to get his get get, get this the, the um he, he got implants into his foot. He about to get him taken out. Am I blocked? Oh, I'm blocked. Oh, she did me dirty, huh? So good. Thank you for blocking me. We're still going to play this video. Uh, somebody says check Janelle, Jan, Janelle Monet first. Let me look on her Instagram. What's going on there? Why well, shorty blocked me for? I'm not the one that got your sugar daddy caught up. That's what she said. Huh? What the fuck is this? That's not anything. Why y'all tell me to go look at Janelle Monet? What's up? <laughs> no, no, he, he had implants to stabilize his leg, but like, you know, you know, they're not permanent. Like he's walking on it good, but we got to get them out. Because there's also lack of bone growth, and I think the the implants are fucking it up. So they're gonna have it, you know. Now he walks without a. Oh, come on, this ain't time for Pluto update. Come on. Now Shorty blocked me. Why she blocked me for? I actually I'll be able to tell she blocked me. I'll go on incognito mode on her ass. Gina, who? Huh. <laughs> Wait, why incognito mode don't load the pages no more? Nigga, I will go on Safari. Yeah, let me go on Safari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not logged in on Safari. You, you know Instagram got that block now where they block one of your accounts, all your accounts is blocked. Like, they got the ill block. I ain't gonna hold you. All right, I just opened up a Safari tab. Gina V. Hyun. Am I saying her name right? Yeah, now the new Instagram block is diabolical, nigga. Like, Gina V. Hyo. Am I, am I spelling it wrong? Uh, H-U-Y-N-H. Bro, it won't even load her page. Nigga, I'm, I'm on Microsoft Edge. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> no edging. <laughs> no diddy. It might be up. Nigga, I can't see that page. Fuck that, nigga. I don't know what's going on with her page, bro. Maybe something's going on with her page. I don't think it's me. I think the Mark Zuckerberg fucking on her shit. Anyway, why'd y'all tell me to go to uh, 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 Janae 
Monet, Janelle Monet page. What? She don't fuck with Diddy? So I'm block. I'm not fiending, nigga. Who sent in $100? Yo, Lord Hybrid. My boy got them bands, bro. Appreciate you, Lord, Lord Hybrid. Everybody spam up big W's to Lord Hybrid in the YouTube chat. He sent in $100. He said, bro, maybe Diddy was coming out with his own brand of booty lube. That ain't no fucking federal crime. All they got on Diddy is the AR-15 with a serial number scratched off and arson for burning up Kid Cudi's car. The rest is bullshit. Diddy going to take it to trial. Well, it, it, you know, if they so vehemently is going, are going against what they believe Cassie is saying, they look like they would take it to trial. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Shout out to Lord Hybrid, though. Okay. Uh, um, hmm. All right. Since I can't pull it up, here we go. And then there were some photos, and I know you got hella followers from that because when Shade Room got it, it was just, it was over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once they get it, it's over. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So I want to start from the beginning, okay? Because we discussed a lot um, over the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, some very, very intimate details. Chat, no disrespect to her. I seen why Diddy dropped her from the roster. Yeah, I seen the twerk video. We all seen it. Once I seen the twerk video, I said, like that. Oh, hey. And now I'm a real ass, rich ass from the, huh? Go. <laughs> Nah. Yeah, you could be like a four stringer with that ass. You know what I mean? Fourth string, no disrespect. But uh anyway, fuck all that. I'm I'm joking around. Is she cooperating cooperating against Diddy or not? We gotta get to the fucking real info about it. She cooperate <laughs> cooperating against Diddy or not. Anyway. Uh, back to this details and things that just kind of made me go wow okay about um the specifics of you and diddy's relationship so i want to start from the beginning okay okay um how long have you known diddy i've known him for five years five years and yes do you mind like telling me what year did from, you meet him? i met him february 2014 well well technically Again, she would be a subject of who the feds would want to talk to. I'm wondering what happened. Technically, the very first time I met him um, was September 2013 because I was at a fight in Vegas. And I went to the Palms and he was hosting there. So I, I kind of met him there, but um, he says he remembered it vaguely. But and then like five months later, I ran in, ran into him again in Miami, mm. February 14, 2014. So... That's when we like officially met, I guess. And what was that encounter like? Um, when you met him and like you remember him, but he didn't remember you. Of course, everybody remembers Diddy. It's like it's yeah. Diddy. Um, <laughs> well, I think he saw me, and then he was like, "This was at the Palms." He he saw me, and he asked who who was I with, and I pointed to the guy I was with, and he kind of left me alone after that. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So that nothing really. Oh, she skated on her old guy for Diddy. Diddy, you slime ball man. Yeah, no. During that meeting in Miami. No. Okay. Nothing. So, no, no, no. In Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah. Okay. So he was trying to holler in Vegas. Yes. Okay. And but then he, he's but then I told him I was with with another man, so he kinda left me alone. But then I ran into him again. By the way, real quick, real quick, and, and, and again, I'm sorry for shameless plugs, but I gotta do it. Gotta shout out my people. Hey, uh big shout out to um Michael. Damn, my nigga just dropped like two hundred dollars on on like Mad items. Shout out to my boy Michael Vanham. Oh, damn, I'm saying government. My bad. Uh, he just copped a whole bunch of stuff. Like, if, if I buy things, I'll, I'll give y'all a shout out or whatever. But I'll say your first name, Mike. Appreciate you. Thank you for the, for the uh, support. All right. February 2014. Okay. And this was in Miami. In Miami. All right. And so, what was that conversation like in Miami when you guys met up again for the second time and you weren't with? A man. I, I don't think. He, I don't think when we met in Miami, I don't think he remember me from Vegas. Okay. He doesn't remember that. Okay. Until I told him. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
So what did he say? It was like serendipity or something. He said he said he remembers it vaguely, <clears throat> but not really. So, but um, I don't know. I I was with a friend. I was visiting a friend in Miami. She had moved to Miami from Nebraska, and I was visiting her. And um, um, we were we went out the night before I met him. So we were out all night and me and her. Yo, chat, completely unrelated. Who cares about this? But I'm asking anyway, because I'm just petty. Y'all think Diddy got Riz? Or like, I think Diddy's risen these girls up or he's just, he's showing out with cash, lifestyle, money, and using his name like I'm Diddy, right? Or you think he's saucing them up like, what's up, girl? You know what I mean? Damn. Like, you think he's kicking game or you think he's just like, I'm Diddy, fuck out of here. Her, we were with a couple of guys and um, they were like, let's go to Puffy's house. So I was just like, we were just like, okay, whatever. It was like nine in the morning. Wow, we were part Puffy's house at nine? By the way, shout out to Ayeli. Thank you for the uh, for the uh, 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 shirt purchase, by the way. Morning. I mean, no one was <laughs> no one was there, but he was up too, though. Okay. And, um, so we went to his house at like nine in the morning and... Um, when I first walked in, I'm very, I'm very like a chill person. I can tell. <laughs> and so, um, like I could walk into a White House and still be chill, but like inside, I'm like screaming, "Oh my god!" But when I came to his house, obviously, I was like kind of, I was kind of like, you know, I don't know, I guess like starstruck I, in a way, because okay. I'm from Nebraska, so we, I'm not around none of this. So, um, right. but I'm chill though. And he came, so when I came, he was like, uh, he was like, you're not happy to see me? Oh. You, you at Diddy's house, that mean you made it. The cockiness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <shit>. Okay, Diddy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, um. And how old were you at the time? I was 20, 21. 21. Or 22. Okay. And Wait. you're how old now? I'm 27. Okay. okay. Maybe 22. So a long time. Yeah. These dates are crossing over. We'll get into, get into that in a second. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're going to get messy in a second. All right. Um, so you're at the house. You meet Diddy. So obviously he made you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, I, you know, we've seen it. Diddy seems to be this like very just kind of inspirational, always just kind of over the top DJ Khaled kind of personality. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and so I take it you guys, I mean, did you guys like hit it off during that? that initial encounter at his house or um, did it no. take some time? No, for? not really. Um, we were there probably for like an hour, I say. And he was talking to the guys that we were with. Okay. Um, they were artists. So like they knew each other. Okay. Um, so he was like talking to them most of the time. And then um, by the time we left, I had already gotten the car and then he like walked over, over to the car and asked for my number. Oh. And so I gave it to him. How'd that make you feel? Um, Did he asking for your number? It made me feel, uh, I don't know. It made me feel good. Kind of. Really? You didn't see him as like this old pervert <laughs> asking for it. <laughs> um, no, not at all. <laughs> I know. Cause I see a 50 year old dude. I'm like, oh, at your age. <sighs> I mean, I knew I knew like, he was older than me, but I've always hung out with older people in general, so it didn't. See, this is the problem with Tasha K. Tasha K is not a genuinely beautiful woman, so she don't understand how beautiful women look at rich men. You know what I mean? Like, look at Tasha K. You know what I'm saying? This chick don't give a fuck how old Diddy is, nigga. Diddy got them billions. Fuck that. She with it? It make me. Yeah, it doesn't didn't bother me. Okay. Now, from that time of you meeting him and you give him your number, mm -hmm. how long did it take before you guys actually made it official? Well, you made it Chat, official. What you mean, knock it off? Listen, listen, listen. I'm sorry to tell y'all the truth, niggas. You could be as ugly as sin. If you got the bread, you're basically a bad bitch. If you got the bread and, and the fame and the status, you're a bad bitch. As a woman. You could have a billion dollars. If your face still look like that, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of niggas who still fuck you, but like, come on. Like, you're not going to get nobody else who's successful that won't fuck with you, period. Like, men and women are a little bit different. Like, come on, we all know this, right? Like, you know what I mean? 
women don't care that much about men looks as much as they care about men pockets when it comes to men we give a f we give a lot of fucks about how women look like that's the number one thing we rather uh a 10 working at mcdonald's than a four that has a a a, a, a salary job paying sixty thousand a year let's be honest right 10 working at mcdonald's making twenty thousand a year or a six a six making 60,000 per year. Like, bro, come on. Like, you know, like men and women, we're just different. Men, we love we love looks. We love beauty. Women, for the most part, they love status, money, all that shit. Come on. I don't got to hit you with a red pill shit. Come on. Stop playing. Issue, But he was off, of course, doing um, other things the way these dates are kind of lining We never, up. like, okay, let's be official. We never, ever had that conversation. We kind of, it just kind of. We just kind of knew, like, we just felt like we were together. Okay. I mean, so you spent a lot of time together. We did. Okay. So you were at the house. Yo, y'all think did he fuck on the first night? Like, real talk. Did you meet his kids? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, um, when we spoke the other night, you said that uh, things had gotten so serious that you became pregnant. Not once, but twice, correct? Yes. Okay. When was the first time you became pregnant with uh, Diddy's child? The first time was um, October 2014. Okay. So this was like, what, a year after? Um, No, not a year, but because I met him in February and then okay. I got pregnant in October. Oh, so the same, the same year. The same year. Also, I hate when y'all start getting on this righteous shit. Yo. I, I, you know, this is only, I got to pull up niggas y'all look up to. Jay-Z. Listen, there was a time Jay-Z was late 30s, Beyonce in, in, in early 30s. You know, late, late 30s, Beyonce in her mid 20s, right? And I mean, rest, stop, stop with this. Oh, okay. Diddy, like, granted, if, if I don't know what age, uh, actually, she probably just said, I probably missed it. Now, if Diddy's 50 and meets her at like 20, one is like damn diddy like god damn bro but she a grown-ass woman bro okay by the way also here's the funny thing too all of us y'all oh y'all talking about age and shit bro i keep telling you shaq is hitting every 21 year old alive by the way shaq you know you're next right shaq been fucking 20 yo there's a there, y'all see this picture i didn't even mean to snitch on i didn't even snitch on shaq this is just reality y'all seen this picture with shaq bro Yo, Shaq is diabolic, bro. Shaq is like diabolic, bro. I, I gotta show you this. Like, there's this one joint. This girl, let me see, let me see. Hold on, I, I gotta show you this. Shaq, listen, Shaq make niggas like Diddy look like they ain't, they ain't even trying, bro. The, the 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 thing is, a nigga like Shaq, he a billionaire. So like, whatever the fuck you talking about, it don't matter. He like he a billionaire for real. Like Diddy ain't no more billionaire. Look, look at this right here. <laughs> Look at this. Bruh. Yo, hold on. Like, look. How old is Shaq? But I'm going to be honest with you. If you win five rings or four rings and you're the greatest basketball player, like you're the most dominant, like you could still fuck 20-year-olds. It's <laughs> like, unfortunately. That's just kind of how the culture looks at it, right? Like, again, I'm just telling you how culture looks at it, right? Yo, Shaq took a picture with this chick. Like, bro, come on, dog. This looks crazy. Nigga, like, bro, you're so taller than her. You're so old. Like, bro. Like, this shit look crazy. Bro. Like, this is diabolical, bro. <laughs> you feel me? You feel what I'm saying? But, nigga's like, uh, he gonna get a statue outside of the Staples Center. Fuck it. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> That's just reality. You get what I'm saying? Uh, it is reality that matters. So, when y'all be mentioning... Yo, this chick look like she might be 19, bro. Like, come on, bro. Anyway. And uh, you mind telling me what happened with that pregnancy? Um, He, well, I told him and he was like, he was like, you're going to get an abortion, right? And then I was like, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know yet. And then 
And then he offered me 50000 to get rid of it. But I turned it down because um, I just... I just loved him and I just, uh, and I wanted, I wanted to, I was like trying to prove that I wasn't the girl that was wanted him for money. for money. Okay. I just, just care about him. And, um, I just wanted him to be nice to me. That's it. I was like, I don't want your money. I just want you to, um, be nice to me. Whether you decide to keep the baby or not. Mm hmm. So would it be fair to say if that he was an asshole about it? Um, I mean, offering somebody fifty thousand dollars to abort a baby, whew, he must really want it gone bad. Um, I mean, in the beginning, like the first three and a half years, he was. I mean, like the first three month, three four months, he was really nice, but then after that, he was he started being an asshole. So, like I say, like the first. Three and a half years, he was like mean to me. So when you say mean, describe it. Um, he was abusive. He was like always belittling me and always like, he, I just he was like mentally, emotionally, and physically abusing me. Keywords, y'all. Did he? Mm hmm. It's not the first time we've heard that. Mm hmm. Um, there was an incident, of course, with Cassie. Where reporters are saying that the police were called because they got into an altercation. This, I think it was like two or three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, tell me some of the things. This is funny as fuck. My bad. Y'all see the shit we just posted? Yo, tell me why. Tell me why Shaq is on online. Shaq said, nope, it's not the kid. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me see if I can. Wait, where is it posted? Shade Room, 23 minutes ago. Shaq said, nope, not the kid. Can somebody tell Shaq, yo, you 50-something, nigga. You, you, you can't call yourself a kid no more. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I'm about to say the same thing with Drake. Yo, Drake, you finna hit 40. You're not the boy. You're the man. You're a grown-ass man. Shaq, you, 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 you 60, nigga. You're not the kid, okay? You're the grandpa. Nope, not the granny. Not the grandpa. That's what we want to see. Also, I'm gonna be honest with you, I still think it's Shaq. He said it not not him. Nigga, I'm pretty sure somebody gonna zoom in, nigga. That's a diesel Superman tattoo on a nigga arm, bro. Like, come on, man. The fuck you got <laughs> Yo, let me stop, man. Before Shaq DM me again. Did I ever tell you Shaq DM me? Talking crazy. The whole time I'm like, yo, Shaq, shut your shut your stupid ass up. Yo, Gilly, Gilly called me, was just like, yo, bro. Yo, Shaq got paid. Yeah, I be snitching. Yo, Shaq, you know I snitch on you, even though you're a cop. They said it, it told me that Shaq got paid killers in 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 LA on his payroll. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I'm apologize. <laughs> oh man, Shaq, you ain't shit. You know you're next though. That's facts. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> Things that he would say to you. Um, he would always compare me to Cassie and tell me that I'm the bad one and she's the good one. Um, and he was with both of you guys at the same time. Yeah. Um, and at one point, like I was breaking out really <clears throat> bad with acne and he would be like, he said this a few times to me. He was like, baby, why don't you go see a doctor or something? I don't date women with bumps on their face. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. He would um, say that to me. Take a drink. <laughs> Relax. I want to be honest with you. This is to show how much you was Diddy's puppet. You got bum ass Tasha K saying take a drink and you just immediately take a drink. You could see this is why Carisha said if I wanted Diddy could have you doing A, B, C, and D. Because the fucking interviewer <laughs> is just telling you what to do and you're just obeying. And he would be like he said this a few times to me. He was like, baby, why don't you go see a doctor or something? I don't date women with bumps on their face. Oh. Yeah, he would um, say that to me. Take a drink. Oh, shit, look. Immediately. Relax. Okay. I can tell this is bringing up a lot. We have um, some tissues. Thank you, Jasmine. 
Okay. Um, so, of course, that is very, I mean, humiliating, especially when you love someone and they tell you that you're not good enough for them. Mm-hmm. He And he would, like, call me <laughs> names, like, um, he would call me a hoe every single day. A hoe? Yeah. I hate when females say this because, like, that's like a different subject. Like, wait, were you a hoe? <laughs> like, was he lying? Like, 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 I get it. That's not like a dope term, but it's just like, were you doing whole shit? <laughs> Are you fucking other? <laughs> Why would he call you? Not that he had a reason, but like, in his mind, what do you think prompted him to call you a hoe? I th- now that I think about it, I think. Oh, okay. Hold on. We're getting to use some tissue. I don't want you messing up your makeup, okay? You look gorgeous, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, thinking back now, I think he did it because he wanted to. He wanted me to feel low about myself, like so that I stick around him because, like, no one would. I don't. Oh shit! By the way, shout out. Ooh, damn, y'all been going crazy. Travel, appreciate you for the um. Merch purchase, uh, uh, Janaki. Oh, damn, homie dropped like 200. Appreciate you, my nigga. Like, real nigga bought six items. God damn. Everybody, big, big W to my man. I don't want to give up his full name, but uh, Janaki, like, he went crazy with the merch. Um, Nando, appreciate you. Isaiah, appreciate you. Lazarus, I think that's my boy who do, uh, he do all the edits. Um, if you're wondering who do all the edits for my, um, um, off the record and certain other things, my man Lazarus. Shoot to my man Lazarus. No, I just feel like he'd try to um, use... I was naive and young when I met him, so I feel like he tried to take advantage of that and manipulate me. Mm -hmm. It made me feel low about myself. Mm -hmm. And I I guess that's where, you know, obviously, um, at least with her, it doesn't look like Diddy wasn't dating her on their age or nothing like that, but do y'all think that's an actual thing where, like, okay, all right, Diddy's a mogul, he might have been 50 or whatever, close to 50 by the time he met her. Definitely within his own and, like, super successful. She's insecure a bit. She doesn't have anything. He's offering her a way of life. He's kind of telling her how other women are giving it up and, you know, probably leveraging that against her. She's feeling secure. She's feeling like she got to... Do, 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 do you feel like that's, like, manipulation? What do y'all think? Do y'all think that's manipulation? Because her demeanor kind of gives off the like, you know, like, you know, I'm I'm trying to please like. You guys, let me know. Now let's talk about the. Um, let's talk about the physical abuse. If you if you're mm-hmm. okay, are you okay with that? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so obviously you terminated baby one. Mm-hmm. Because you loved him. Mm-hmm. Um, how long after you guys started dating is when, when did the physical abuse start? The first time it ever happened, um, which was not even like that long into the relationship, because I met him in February and then um, it was probably like May, the beginning of May because we were at me. Mix Mill's birthday. Okay. Uh, he had like a mansion party and um, we went, but what, why were we there? We I was sitting here and then Puff and then Meek, but I was like covered with like, um, like a stand or something. Like probably says like happy birthday Meek or something like okay. that, but it's like a little stand that like was covering me. Okay. Yeah. Meek Mill is his bitch, not yours. The fuck? Yeah. 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 Listen, I, I get it. Yo, you don't want two of your hoes in the same spot. You is whole, Meek is whole. Both of y'all is whole. Like, y'all can't be in the same spot. The fuck? Because there was, like, a lot of cameras and stuff there. So it was, like, me, Puff, and Meek. Puff had, like, leaned forward to, like... Chat. No, no homo, but... Who y'all think Diddy probably fuck with more? Her or Meek? 
Who y'all think? I ain't never seen a video with Diddy saying to her, you doing it, mommy. You deserve it. I like you when you be scrapping and scraping, mommy. I never heard that. I heard, I like the way you do it, daddy. You deserve it. That's what I heard. You deserve this. That like, shit. I ain't, yo, if she don't got a video like this, if she don't got a video like this, I want to hear it. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. See? She ain't never put in that work. <laughs> Meek was putting in that work. That's the difference. Sure, you not putting in that work. King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. I see why she tight. Um, talk to somebody, say hi or whatever. And so I turned over to Meek and I said, happy birthday. He put his hand out and he was like, thank you. So I reached his hand and shook it. And as I shook Meek's hand, he turned around and saw it and he got so mad. Wow. And um, and then we, we probably like stayed like 20 minutes after that happened. And then when we got in the car, he like grabbed my hair. We were in the um one of those Escalade trucks. Okay. So I was sitting on this side, he was on the other side and he like grabbed my hair and like cussed me out um for doing that. He was like, "Why the fuck can I cuss?" Yeah. Oh, he was like, "Why the fuck you like you shaking his hand for like just saying so stuff it was, like it was that. Just I was like, like a jealous rage. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I was say? just saying happy birthday, nothing else. He thought, I think he thought I was trying to be sneaky behind his back because I like reach over mm -hmm. when he like leaned forward to talk to somebody else. So he thought I was trying to be sneaky. And you were how old at this time? Um, I was 22 probably. Whoa, okay. Wow. Young, but still. <sighs> okay. Um, And then, um, he did this so okay uh by the way also uh, who's just donated <laughs> uh story to tell thank you for five and say your shack is not next because he changes those women lives did he ruin those women lives shack gives up damn nigga you sound like you got a personal story like shack fucked you he said shack is not next shack changes women lives did he ruin women's lives Shaq gives out $250,000 care packages. Does he? Because Shaq hit up three of my three of the girls I've dealt with before. I would have told him, go get that 250 k We need that. Need that. What? Shaq giving out 250 k care packages? Okay. All right. Uh, oh, <laughs> wait. Oh, this is not the lead attorney. The lead attorney's paralegal says, she deleted. She didn't delete her IG uh, act. She fucking blocked you. <laughs> Justin Clark, they even attend. He says, "Yo, act. The free cough must have smelled ungodly." Yo, everybody, describe what you think the free cough room smelled like right after the free cough ended. The best one. I don't know. I'll I'll give something to, or we'll, we'll give a free shirt or something to. What do you think the freak off room must have smelt like immediately after the freak off? <laughs> Baby oil. Baby oil don't got no. Uh, does he have a scent? Somebody said butt pussy cocoa butter. <laughs> Somebody said but does he fish hot dog water. <laughs> Garbage truck juice. <laughs> Somebody's all right, says puffy juice. <laughs> cabbage? No, 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 definitely not no cabbage. Somebody says smell like meek sweat. Yo, stop playing with meek. Yo, real talk, y'all niggas stop playing with meek. Y'all know how meek get down. Stop playing. Somebody says Sodom and Gamaro. Smell like tuna. The New York subway. <laughs> 
Yo, stop playing with Flacco. Who said Flacco in my chat? Yo, that's big Flacco, and that's my nigga. Stop playing with him. What? It smell like the chum bug. All right, y'all. <laughs> Yo, a story to tell. Thank you for the five again. You said Shaq took your girl that you lying. You lying. It might have happened, though. I literally just talked to a rapper who told me he got into an argument with Shaq. And I'm like, bro, how is it four people at... Tusi called me one day. He's like, yo, Ak, why does bitch ass nigga Shaq in my DMs? In my girl DMs? I'm like, don't worry, bro. He does it to everybody. You're not special. Is that word? So he did it to me mad times. Another nigga called me. Yo, why this nigga Shaq? Bro, Shaq's a whore, okay? And he only fucks... Like, I think Shaq think he... Him being almost 60, he gonna keep fucking 20-year-olds and become young. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I can't even be mad at him. Why well, become a billionaire, right? Uh, um, the thunder sound. Thank you. He said, take a drink as therapy from Mr. Take That is, is, is crazy. Take a drink as therapy. Oh, my God. Damn, we have, like, straight off the path of what Gina's saying. Shout out to Gina. Why she blocked me, though? King Los was sitting in the back. Okay. And then when we got to the hotel, um, it got even worse. And um, he like, he like tried to, he took one of my sh heels and tried to throw it at me. And then he like, like mushed my face and like really hard and made my nose bleed. Wow. And the only person that ever, every time me and he like, we get into like fights like that. The only person that ever helped me was um, D Rock. Everyone else just kind of just allowed it to happen and just like looked the other way. So most of his entourage were, I guess, enablers. like his staff. Yeah. Or yeah. And they wouldn't say anything. They would just watch him. No, just... Not not watch it, but kind of just walk away and just let leave us alone. That is sad. I, I will be honest. Uh, you know, like, n n no bullshit or joking aside. It's like, like a lot of these women, and we're, we're hearing the stories even from Cassie and, and even this woman, like, yo, we're left to fend for ourselves. Security only cares about if Diddy is going to hurt. They're here to help and protect his image. Why? They're getting paid by him. We as women, we're just kind of getting abused or people looking the other way or people are saying, well, you must have did something, right? That, that is kind of fucked up. Um, again, we don't know what Gina um, currently feels. Is she cooperating with the state or not state, the feds? Is she a potential witness? I'm pretty sure. Yo, the grand jury said they issued 300 grand jury subpoenas. It took months to get through the nitty gritty. She might be a person who is into, you know, th th that's a key witness that's going to be involved with the abuse or whatever the case is, even though clearly the main witness is Cassie. So we don't know if she's involved with the case or we don't know if maybe she's trying to lay low to try to avoid it. Now, it's, it's way easier to avoid a state case. Like we've seen people either try to plead the fifth or even down to... um be held in contempt, they're down to sit in jail. For state cases, Fed case, they're coming at you with a with a full court press. If they if they if they feel like you're either a co-conspirator or a, a victim, they're not gonna, you know, especially if they want somebody as bad as they want Diddy, they're not gonna let you just play the game with them. This isn't Fulton County. This isn't a YSL case, right? So I'm wondering what's going on with her. Um, I'm pretty sure more will be determined later, but but she's given and she did this voluntarily five years ago. Five years ago from now is 2019, right? Remember, the feds need to prove ongoing behavior. She would be a very integral part of proving ongoing behavior. Uh, by the way, also, uh, um, sh sh yo, you know, thank you guys. You guys are doing. You guys are running up the brunch. Oh my god! Uh, real quick, Tosin, thank you. Appreciate you um, for the merch purchase. Um, Noel Bertrand, really appreciate you. You bought two items. Uh, Brennan, thank you for the three items you bought. And Dave, thank you for the two items, all right? Appreciate you guys. Let me keep playing. And not really step in to um, stop. Wow. Now, what made you stay? Because obviously there's baby number two. Money. 
Now, Chad, I don't fuck with gold diggers either. But I, I don't know if we should call these women gold diggers. Bro, this girl, like, no disrespect to her. I don't know if she has a marketable skill. Also, these women have never worked a nine to five. Like, they're used to have their bread buttered on both sides. When you ask them why they stay, it's like they're like, well, I only know this lifestyle. And I guess I have to just keep going through it. You know, I won't necessarily call her a gold digger. Maybe you will. I won't. This is all she knows. A lot of these women, all they know is that they're beautiful. They're they're attractive. And they've caught the eyes of these famous guys. They have no marketable skills. They've never had to use their brain. They've never had to problem solve. They've never had to get a job. When, 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 it, when you say, why do, you, why do they stay? A lot of these women, they're staying because until they find another man to foot the bill or find another opportunity, it's like, imagine you, like, being in a fucked up job. And you're like, your boss talks to you crazy. They, they be doing you dirty at work, but, like, it pays the bills. So, you know, I, I know it's easy to just demonize these women, like, yo, y'all whores, this and third, but, you know, <laughs> and no one's ever going to feel, well, actually, people do feel bad for attractive women, but for some of these women, they have no skills at all. Their only skill is being a commodity of sexual objectivity that rich and successful men lust and yearn after, Right? And their thing is, all right, once they realize that, let's find the guys of the guy of highest value or the guy with the most money. So when you're with Diddy, there's, there's not another Diddy coming around. You know what I mean? And then there's more beatings, according to you, that happened after that, because that was just the first time. What made you stay? Um, because I just thought, um, um, I just thought, that he was only being like that because he loved me. Um. Get you a tissue. I don't want you messing up your makeup, okay? I'm sure you've shed enough tears. <laughs> about um, this, so. Because, I mean, I grew up watching my mom get beat by my dad, so oh. that's all I knew. So I just thought it was normal, and I thought it just mean he loved me. Do you know most domestic abuse victims? <clears throat> abuse victims don't talk about their abuse. They're ashamed of it. They feel like as if they've done something to deserve it. Yeah, I I felt that. Now let me ask you a question again. I hope if you're watching this, we've been streaming for seven hours straight. Again, we're getting to 10 hours today. We ain't getting off. We ain't finna get off. We finna do 10 hours. It's all good. But let me ask you a question genuinely, Chad. Do you believe that... Um, you know, in judging Diddy, it's some, some of these things are clear to me. Diddy believes in a harem. He doesn't want to be with one woman. He wants to have his different flavors. He wants to mix and match. He wants, you know, sometimes to be able to just exercise power and control. Um, to be like, hey, this is a woman that I could have sex with any time, but I want that guy to have sex with her. Obviously, you know, which, which you know, and all these freak offs, you know, we've not heard. We've never heard that he wanted a rapper to fuck her. He's always gotten a sex worker who would never be seen again. So, like, maybe that's his homoerotic fetish of him wanting another man there. But he clearly was still competitive. Like, he didn't want Drake fucking his bitch. He didn't want Jay-Z fucking his bitch. He didn't want Fabulous fucking his bitch. He didn't want Jadakiss fucking his bitch. He rather some white guy or some other guy who's a sex worker fucking his girl. How much do you judge? Okay, you know, I, I'm not here to judge kinks. Obviously, that's not my thing. To be honest, I don't think most black men are into that. And if you're white, you know, I love I love all the, my Caucasian people and, and, and mixed race or other people who watch me. But 
us niggas, we not into people fucking our hoes. Or let me not say hoes. Now our girls or women or wife or girlfriend. Some of these white people might be with that shit. How much do you judge Diddy that he was on that extra freaky shit? Like, clearly regular sex, you know, either got boring for him, wasn't enough. Shit, you know, even a threesome, maybe that wasn't enough. Like, uh, I've done that a million times. It was clear he was into really freaky, freaky shit. How much do you judge him for being into freaky shit as opposed to you just analyze whatever you've heard about him to be, hey, it's not about how big of a freak you were. It's about consent. Because I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I think the reason why they mention a thousand bottles of um, lubricant is for us. It's for us to feel like, yo, Diddy isn't like us. Like. Bro, there's nobody in here that has a fucking thousand bottles of lubricant on hand. Like, they, they, like we, we, like if you could cognizantly remember going through a thousand bottles of lubricant, like you're a fucking freak too. What? So part of that is to kind of like shame Diddy on a kinky, freaky level, and that adds on to the real meat and potatoes, which is did Diddy do things against these women's will number one consent did he abuse them did he force them to do things by coercion by you know um a uh, 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 um, threat of financial incentive or whatever that's what we should be caring about if diddy likes to lick toes with all due respect we we shouldn't care if he likes to lick asshole we shouldn't care if he likes to whatever weird shit he likes to do we shouldn't care right if he's a nigga that his kink is to suck a nigga's dick who just put his you know, put his dick in some pussy whatever that's weird obviously but like whatever his weird kink is we shouldn't care we only should care about is everything consensual are you abusing these women are you is everything on the up and up but these days we are judging him on the weird shit right like we're like bro like what type of nigga goes sits in a corner on a desk and films another nigga fucking his bitch? That's kind of weird. That's kind of some. That's some weird nigga shit. Like we don't know. I don't know no nigga who do that. No black niggas. <laughs> Let me just correct it. I don't know no African Americans or black people who just go sit in the corner and jerk off while your girl getting donkey fucked by another nigga. So unfortunately, I guess for Diddy. We're not only judging him in the court, in the court of public opinion. Remember, again, the court of public opinion. We're not only judging him on consent, which that should be the thing. Consent. Are you abusing people? Are you, you know, th these things that are laws. We're judging this nigga because he got a thousand bottles of, uh, of lubricant. He's super freaky. He's letting other niggas fuck his girl. We are judging him because of that, too. Let's be honest. We are, right? We are. My dad, so oh. that's all I knew. So I just thought it was normal, and I thought it just mean he loved me. Do you know most domestic abuse victims, <clears throat> abuse victims don't talk about their abuse? They're ashamed of it. They feel like... As if they've done something to deserve it? Yeah, I, f I felt that. Let's talk about Baby 2. When did Baby 2 come? Um, Last, wait, yeah, last year in August. So. Yo, I've never heard anyone say they use a condom. Or I've never heard anybody in these free... Diddy clearly doesn't like to be with one woman. That's no crime, by the way. You know, you know, whatever. But we never heard condoms. Instead, we're hearing multiple pregnancies. You know, one thing I've been surprised that we haven't heard. Yeah, if you're fucking six, seven girls, right? And you're doing it all unprotected. Bro, first of all, all six, seven girls. Say you're a guy. All six, seven girls. Most likely, they're not only fucking you. They might be fucking two other guys, one other guy. By the time you extend 
that web of who's fucking who, there's dozens of people in the mix. So you know what happens? An STD gets gets introduced. One thing we haven't heard is anyone accused Diddy of STDs or anyone admit to STDs, which obviously that's embarrassing for the person who would have to admit it, but that's one thing I'm kind of surprised. I'm like, so we ain't never hear about Diddy. Like, we're hearing about Diddy impregnate you multiple times, which clearly leads us to believe he was having sex with you unprotected all along, but he's never been monogamous to you. He got mad on the girls. No STDs? All right. Talk about that conversation. You're pregnant. You tell him. And this mm -hmm. is obviously after six years of you guys being together. And mind you, it, it wasn't my fault that I got pregnant. I told him because I have like this period app and it tells me when I'm ovulating and stuff. So I, I told him like I told him that I'm ovulating. So don't do it. But he just did it anyway. And then I got pregnant and um, he like. Okay, just get an abortion, like he, no hesitation. Oh. But this time was harder for me because I had been with him for so long and I was like really in love with him and and um part of me wanted to keep it, but he didn't want it, so um um we had agreed to um get it but i only agreed to it because he told me to um and then we went to turks and caicos like a couple of days later um and during that time he was like giving me <laughs> drinks like alcohol like giving me drinks to drink and i was just like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not laughing because of this because it's not funny I just seen another video and I'm like, no fucking way. Yo, look at this video right here. Jeff. We sit down with the man who famously represented Meek Mill and Bill Cosby on his thoughts regarding the newly unsealed federal indictment. Meek Mill's lawyer is indictment against Sean Diddy Combs, charging the music mogul with sex trafficking. Yo, Meek, listen, we don't get along, but you got to fire this lawyer. You can't be with this lawyer. Right now, I don't need my lawyer commenting on nothing, did he? What the fuck? I want to be acting like I don't know that nigga. And racketeering. We bring on Brian J. McMonagall. Look at, look at the fucking headline. Meek Mill lawyer speaks on P. Diddy next move. Oh my God. Please say it ain't so. Once again, welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. We're honestly still reeling from the news of the arrest and indictment of Sean Diddy Combs. You know, we knew this was going to happen. We By the way, uh, 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 salute to my man, Freeway. Man, I heard, I heard you got me on in the green room, my brother. Salute to you, brother. Yo, yo, I got to get an interview with you, Freeway. Appreciate you watching. Supporting always. Um, obviously, not nothing about this type of stuff, but would love to um, sit down with you. Just talk about your life, career, and everything else. But uh, salute to my man, um, Freeway. Apparently, he's watching. He knew it was going to happen. There was reporting for months that the 54-year-old may be the target of a criminal investigation. His homes in L.A. and Miami, they were raided by federal agents back in March. There was a grand jury in New York that was impaneled. He had been hit with numerous lawsuits alleging sexual assault, sex trafficking, illegal narcotics and gun possession. There were rumors that those alleged victims were cooperating with federal prosecutors. And then last night, it happened. Sean Combs, the music mogul, artist, producer, was arrested out in New York City. Reporting indicates he was taken into custody last night by federal authorities at the Park Hyatt Hotel. He'd actually come to New York in anticipation of the charges. And this comes after a grand jury has indicted him. And that grand jury indictment was unsealed today. A 14-page filing. Damian Williams, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, charged Combs with three counts racketeering conspiracy that's the first one essentially that combs operated a criminal enterprise that engaged in sex trafficking forced labor kidnapping arson bribery obstruction of justice that they used coercion threats physical sexual violence guns drugs to intimidate people to get them to do what he wanted 
And there's a large discussion about freak offs when he would allegedly <laughs> threaten and lure women to engage in sex yeah. acts. Freak offs is the craziest shit I've ever heard. Yo, chat, is there any video of Diddy saying freak off? Like, a, like you know what the word freak off kind of like almost suggests, right? Like you ever had, it'd be like, yo, this is a joke off. This is a something off. It's like, we're going to find out who's the best, who's the ultimate, right? Like that, that's what, that's the image I get. A freak off sounds like, let's see who's the freakiest motherfucker of the freaks. That's crazy. That's why I'm like, yo, we keep seeing this in lawsuits, but is there any fucking proof of Diddy saying this shit? Like, I can't imagine him saying, yo, bruv, be like, yo, Diddy, what you want to do? What you want to do today, Playboy? What you want to do today? Go to club? Nah. You want to go to the studio? You know, the locks in there cooking up heat. Nah, fuck that. Fuck them niggas. Yo, you want to put on a shiny suit? Man, fuck that shit. We ain't got time for that. Oh, about the Benjamin, baby. You know what I mean? Take that. What do you want to do today? Nigga, go grab Cassie. Go get some prostitutes. Man, let's go do a freak off. Like, this shit don't even sound... It, it sounds so crazy. It sounds like a movie, my nigga. Like, who the fuck... Bro, you know what movie I just watched for the first time? I never watched it before. Um, anybody in here, one in the chat if you ever watched this. Uh, um, it's called... I was about to say Orange is the New Black. No, no, no. Fifty Shades of Grey. First time I ever watched it. Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm watching the shit. I'm like, this got to be what the freak off is. Except there wasn't multiple people. It was just two people. But it was like some BDSM shit, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But I really started thinking about the freak off, bro. Y'all watched that, right? Where the fuck did Diddy come up with the freak offs? I'm going to be honest with you. Diddy has to tell us who taught him the freak. What the fuck is a freak off? Game seven type freak off. <laughs> like, yo, come on. Fifty Shades of Diddy? Fifty, fifty flavors of lube. You know Diddy had the, you, you know they got the lube that that's like, you could, it's eatable, right? Y'all ain't hear about it? Actually, I just made that up. I don't know if it's true. But he definitely probably had like flavored lube. All type of shit. God damn it, man. Acts with male commercial sex workers. He's also charged with sex trafficking of a victim by using for force or coercion or fraud to have that person engage in commercial sex acts. And he's also charged with transportation of people for purposes of prostitution. And these are three very serious felonies that potentially, you're looking at potentially 15 years to life in prison that's what we're talking about here. By the way, as we sort through all these legal filings around Sean Combs, and there's a lot to get into, can I just take a quick second to tell you guys about something positive? Yeah, some force women and you know men. Um, okay. It's gonna be a war on right now. Brian J. McMonagle, thank you so much for coming on, Brian. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Let's meet my lawyer. So, your reaction, is it what you expected? You know, it was, and yet reading it took me back a little bit. Uh, it's quite stunning um, that he's been charged with a racketeering crime. Um, you know, when you when you think of Rico, you think of a lot of things, and you don't usually think of entertainers. Uh, but here we go. Uh, and it is um, rather staggering in terms of the accusations. You're talking about sex trafficking. You're talking about kidnapping, forced labor, uh, and the like. And um, it's going to be a war. Uh, the charges couldn't be more serious. My guess is the government will seek pretrial detention, as they often do in cases like this. Um, and uh, he's got a really great lawyer, and he's going to need one. And we'll get to that pretrial detention because that is what prosecutors are moving forward with. But the racketeering, right? So you have this idea that he is leading this criminal enterprise. It's not like it's Sean Combs. LLC, you know, it, it's it's a group of people, right? And the idea was is that he's using uh, illegal methods to force women and you know men as well uh, into these situations, and it's a combination of all of these underlying crimes. But 
the government is not proving they're not they don't have to necessarily they're not charging him with kidnapping or forced labor but it's an underlying crime part of this criminal conspiracy how tough is that to prove i mean we know r kelly in new york in the federal context was charged was found guilty sentenced to 30 years in prison but how tough is that to prove you know rico um has always been an amazing tool for prosecutors um supposedly an easy lift but when you look at it a little bit more carefully, the first thing they're going to have to prove is a criminal enterprise. Um, was this really a criminal enterprise or was this simply a legitimate business that did some pretty despicable things, for lack of a better way to describe it? Um, and the government's got to prove two predicate acts in order for there to be a racketeering conviction. So they've got a high burden of proof, but they've used a statute that time and time again has ensnared a lot of people and convicted a lot of people throughout the country because of its breadth. It is extremely broad, but it is not without limits. And so talk to me about ways you think that he would defend against this, because these allegations are quite stunning. We dedicated a full episode to breaking down uh, this indictment, but you know, you, you have everything from um, this idea of all of these ways that he was using sexual violence and physical violence and intimidation uh, against these people to do what he wanted. And I want to break down something for you. So in this separate letter from the prosecutors, uh, from the prosecutors to the judge, were they asking for the ba his bail to be denied or there not to be or he not be granted pretrial um, release? I want to list some of the evidence that they say they have, because this indictment, although it's comprehensive, is a little bare bones. So they say the government has conducted interviews with over 50 victims and witnesses, many of whom saw or experienced the defendant's abuse. Many of those witnesses corroborate one another, and their accounts are similarly consistent with the other types of evidence discussed below. The government only expects that number to continue to grow, given that the investigation, which is now public, is ongoing. The electronic evidence is, is vast. The government has sought and obtained numerous search warrants for such evidence in addition to obtaining evidence voluntarily from certain victims and witnesses. Setting aside devices seized in connection with the defendant's arrest, the government has obtained over 90 cell phones, laptops, cloud storage accounts, as well as over 30 other this? electronic and storage devices such as hard drives, thumb drives, cameras, a surveillance system. This electronic data comes from the defendant himself, as well as co-conspirators, victims, witnesses, and chronicles much of the defendant's criminal activity as it occurs. So that feels really tough to defend, but what do you think some ways that you're going to see his defense attorneys fighting back against this? Yeah, besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how'd you like to play? It, it is going to be really difficult to defend, um, but I think what you're going to see is a rather calculated effort to break it all down. Number one, um, was he involved uh, in the specific acts? You know, is are there are there buffers to use the Godfather analogy? Um, were these sex workers or were they victims? Um, were these people being compensated and paid for their time? Um, were they voluntarily taking drugs or were they uh, being drugged? The difference is like the difference between lightning and lightning bug. And, you know, if, if, the, if the defense can find some symmetry in those talking points to say, hey, listen, bad behavior, horrific behavior. Um, but everybody came into this thing with their eyes wide open. They got paid for what they did and they left um, compensated. I think that's the only way you can defend it because the video, particularly the one that we all saw uh, in the hotel, uh, is pretty hard to stomach. And a lot of this stuff is going to be hard to stomach. The seizures that occurred at his multiple homes with, you know, AR-15 uh, assault rifles that have obliterated serial numbers, tough to defend. Um, but I think what you're going to see is, hey, listen, um, we didn't force anybody to do anything. This was all orchestrated. It was bad behavior. Uh, but but nobody nobody was did anything against their will and then it's a and then it's a cross examination exercise and they got to hope they get a little bit lucky with one or more of these eyewitnesses in terms of maybe giving false statements or something like that otherwise they're in for a long haul do you get the sense even though there are no specific uh, alleged victims named in this indictment and they're not named in the um, the letter as well do you get the sense that this indictment is based upon 
maybe entirely Cassie. the accounts from the people who have already sued him. So Cassandra oh. Ventura, Rodney Jones, uh, Joy Dickerson Neal, he's facing so many different charges and I will, excuse me, so many different complaints. Um, you know, somebody who's been following it for a while, I saw overlap. I mean, more specifically, the Cassandra Ventura 2016 video, what, which we all know about, which was amplified, which was mentioned by Cassandra Ventura in her complaint, and then we all saw after the CNN published it, uh, and Sean Combs apologized for it, it is mentioned in this indictment. That's a more specific example. There are other things that are more general, but again, it seems to be consistent with the allegations that have been levied against him in these complaints. So do you think that those people who sued him are the cooperating witnesses in this in this uh, indictment? There's, there's, there's no question about it. I mean, they, the, mm. this, the, the federal government doesn't typically need a roadmap, but they got one here. And the civil litigation, I'm sure, consists uh, of the very same players, very same alleged victims, very same witnesses. So they took that and they probably, uh, as, as you would have imagined, put it in front of a grand jury got additional witnesses to corroborate that which was, you know, portrayed in the civil litigation. And that's going to be your case. I don't think there's going to be many surprises here for the defense. They've seen this. I think they expected this. And my guess is, is particularly the way I, I've seen this charged, it looks like just as you've discussed, um, they just took the playbook from the civil litigation and, you know, they put it within the rubric of RICO. And now it's life and death. And, and one of the complaints, I believe it was Rodney Jones, alleged uh, RICO violation. So I, it was, I wasn't surprised uh, to ultimately see yeah. that. I, were you surprised at the number of counts here in the sense that, you know, if you compare it to R. Kelly, who I believe was facing more, uh, and there was obvious allegations uh, regarding minors, here you have a very wide, overarching, racketeering charge. And then you have these two other charges, one sex trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion, that is uh, with respect to victim one, and then transportation to engage in prostitution. Uh, why those? Why those charges, you think? Well, you know, they, they want to be able to establish, establish the predicate crimes. And, they, you know, like I say, they only need a couple of them. In every RICO I've ever seen, you have the RICO charge, and then you have a laundry list of counts. Um, I was surprised, quite frankly, uh, of the brevity of the complaint. I, I honestly thought you short. were going to see a RICO and then about 100 separate counts that a jury would have the ability right. to return verdicts. So they did Yeah, you know, I, I heard a lot of people mention tax evasion. They thought maybe there was some financial... Obviously, we don't know if, if, if that's even a thing. But, you know, people people are thinking, yo, they, they want to get, get this guy. Like, you know, we, we spoke to Myron last night and said, yo... The government is in this thing for millions. They've spent millions of dollars of tax paying taxpayer money and in investigating this thing, doing these raids, do, like, you know, monitoring phone taps, going through uh, um, surveillance footage, phone records, all of these things that can compile a case. You want a big result, right? We didn't do that here. It was bare bones, and I'm not so sure it was done without great thought. I, I don't think they wanted to marry themselves to specific acts just in case they don't have them at the time of trial. You know, I don't know what people have said before the grand jury. And keep in mind, you can only indict by what you presented in front of a grand jury. And so they probably kept it, you know, as, as simplistic as they could because juries can get confused, they can get distracted. And then if some of those other counts that you've overcharged um, go wrong, it could lead to a real problem for the government. So they kept it simple. That's so interesting. So you're, there is a possibility that more was presented to the grand jury and the grand jury said there wasn't enough probable cause for these other things you're asking us to come back for, but there is probable cause for these three counts. Could be that. Um, you could also see a, see a superseding indictment. You know, yeah. I've seen that time and time again where you get the indictment, you know, two, three weeks from now, a month from now, they supersede. I don't think they're going to do that here. They took you mean a lot charge of time. them with additional crimes. Oh, yeah. They have the ability, you know, probably within the next month or two to supersede this indictment anytime they wish, quite frankly. Um, I don't think they will. I, I mean, this is the kind of high profile case. They gave a lot of thought to this and they wanted it done this way. And um, it's going to be a war. It's interesting you say that because Damian Williams, the United States attorney, when he held the press conference today, he said 
nothing's off the table. Whether that is charging more, that's charging uh, Sean Combs with additional crimes, or charging other people. There's co-conspirators in this. He's the only one charged right now. I don't know if they're cooperating or he's looking for more to cooperate or more people will be charged. But he was very clear in the bail package letter and also uh, when he spoke today that this is an ongoing investigation. What do you take away from that? Yeah, I mean, if if that's what he said, then then look out because he will be charging other people. I was stunned that other people weren't charged. You always charge um, as many defendants as you can provide probable cause for. Why? You want them to flip. You want to put pressure on them for their lawyers to say, hey, listen, you're facing a life sentence. You better get on the government's team. So this was really surprising Mm. to me, Um, A, because it was just him, B, because of its brevity. So maybe what you're going to see is... um, two or three more shoes dropping. Before I get into the idea of bail, um, how does this This case progress? When would you actually see a trial of Sean Combs on these charges, assuming, of course, that there is not a superseding indictment? You know, I don't know how fast they're moving now in the Southern District, but I assume what will happen here and what happens in a lot of these RICO cases is that the government will file or the defense will request a complex case designation. So it'll push this trial out because I'm sure the discovery is voluminous. It'll take months and months if you're talking about tapes, if you're talking about um, if, you know, if there are wiretaps in this case. Um, you know, they'll try and buy time. I, I could very easily see uh, a trial not for at least six months, maybe even nine months um, if it's designated complex case. I don't see anybody running in here and trying this case from the defense perspective. He's got, as I said, uh, really experienced federal lawyers, and they will take their time. They're going to want to read all the grand jury transcripts, develop as much evidence they, as they can to create doubt, and that's going to take months and months. What is the complex case designation? What does that mean? It just means that the discovery is so voluminous um, oh. that, uh, that it would take you know, any reasonable defense team to ask for more time. You saw it recently, I think, um, in, in some of the Trump, Trump prosecutions where the defense was constantly asking for more time to prepare. I mean, a right. case like this, a RICO case, I've had RICO cases that have taken a year to try, so I wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed. A lot of it depends on your judge, too. Some judges you know, like a rocket docket, and they like to move, so... You know, a lot TBD, but I would think it's got to be six months out at least. I want to talk about the circumstances leading to his arrest and indictment. So it was reported that he came to New York, knew that the charges were happening. Um, There's been, I believe, a photograph of him in Central Park. So he was hanging out again, knowing that this was going to happen or seemingly knowing this was going to happen. I think it was to make the argument the same reason I've been asked, how come Combs hasn't just left the country? He knows he's under investigation. Because if you do that, there's a chance you could be arrested, right, immediately. And I think for him, he wanted to say, I'm not a flight risk. And I think he knew he was gonna be charged, but I think that for him, if he can say, I came here voluntarily, I've been cooperating, I am not a flight risk, I want bail. And the government um, put, for, well, I should tell you, the bail package that was offered they said was insufficient. The bail package that the defense has proposed was home detention with electronic monitoring and a 50 million bond secured by uh, Combs Miami property. The government says that's insufficient, but I can see, again, I think that he has been trying to do everything these past few months to say, I am not a danger, I'm, I'm not a flight risk, and I'm giving you a bail package, but the government says it's insufficient. What do you take away from it? Proof is in the pudding. That's exactly what what they did. I mean, they brilliantly made sure that he came to the jurisdiction voluntarily, um, that he made himself uh, well known that he was there, that he cooperated with law enforcement to the extent that he would self-surrender. All of those things will go into the analysis as to whether or not he should be released. My guess is that the bail package that they presented is certainly sufficient. He'll have to surrender his passport. um, And if he's put on a monitor, you know, they'll know within seconds if, if he's if he's taking the monitor off. I mean, where's he going to go? It's it's not that he doesn't have the resources to go other places. He just doesn't have the means, I think, to get there um, safely if he's under a monitor. So I think the defense really did a brilliant job of, of, of really going beyond what they had to. They could have easily said, hey, listen, he's got no prior record. Uh, he's been involved in any number of philanthropic uh, you know, activities. He's got a laundry list of, of folks that'll, that'll speak for him. He doesn't, he doesn't need, you know, he, he could post a bond of a million dollars. 
they went overboard because they know it's a RICO and they know have, they have a problem. And I think what they submitted, it's going to be hard for a judge to say that's not sufficient, I think. So in their bail package letter, right, the prosecutors say we have a number of reasons why he should not be let out. They say he's a danger to society. He's a flight risk. The weight of the charges, the weight of the evidence, this is incredibly serious. But then they say that he is engaged in bribing witnesses and obstructing justice. So they talk about how in 2016 with the Cassandra Ventura video of him allegedly beating her uh, in that hallway at a hotel, um, they say um, that the defendant tried to bribe a security guard. And it says after the security guard refused the defendant's bribe and after coordination between the defendant and his employees, the defendant's staff contacted other members of hotel security. At the same time, staff members were in close communication with the victim of the assault as well, all in an effort to cover up the defendant's assault and to prevent the incident from being publicly disclosed. Within days of the incident, the surveillance video disappeared from the hotel's server. That is actually very consistent with what Cassandra Ventura alleged in her lawsuit. Now, it says throughout the time period charged in the indictment, members and associates of the enterprise have reached out to multiple victims on behalf of the defendant to convince them not to report the defendant's abuse. Most recently, in late 2023, immediately following public allegations of certain of the defendant's crimes, because we know that he had been hit with a number of lawsuits at that point, including his physical and sexual abuse of women, the defendant and other members of the enterprise made repeated phone calls to victims and witnesses during which they provided victims and witnesses with false narratives of events in an apparent effort to conceal the defendant's crimes. On at least two occasions, the defendant recorded those calls on a co-conspirator cell phone, thereby attempting to obscure his involvement in the obstruction. That feels like that could be a problem for him uh, in terms of in the eyes of the judge. 99% of the cases, if that was alleged in a federal courtroom, it would be enough to hold them. You got to understand there's a, there's, you know, a statutory presumption that exists with certain crimes. And he's got, he really has the burden here, I think, of establishing that, that there are conditions of release that will protect the public. The one thing that federal judges, all judges hate is intimidation of witnesses. Mm. And if they've got, if they've got prima facie evidence of witness intimidation, that could be the one thing that keeps him detained prior to trial. You're absolutely right. I said this before, but I want a little bit of clarification. I looked at the, the law on this. and I'm reading racketeering conspiracy could be 20 years. I'm looking at sex trafficking using uh, fraud or force or coercion. And I, if I read it correctly, 15 years minimum to life in prison, I guess, depending upon the circumstances. I, am I right that this is a situation where if he takes this to trial, um, and he decides to fight it, and he loses, and he's convicted, he could essentially be looking at the rest of his life in prison? No question about it. Federal sentencing guidelines and yeah. the way the RICO stra- the statute is created, uh, it allows a judge to basically say good night. There's no because there's a that. part of it, it, it's called, and I'm just going to pull it up here one more time, it's part of the racketeering count, count one of this uh, indictment, it calls it the notice of special sentence. Yeah, I didn't get this part. I, I was reading this. I, I didn't really get this. Same factor. And that's what that yeah. is. They'll try and posture this case, depending upon what counts he's convicted of, as a, as a life sentence. Um, and, I, you know, it, quite frankly, when I first looked at it, I said to myself, if he goes to trial and loses, it's for sure a 25 to life case. So um, the stakes couldn't be higher. Uh, mm. You know, you go to trial in a case like this, you lose particularly on some of the um, some of these allegations. There are not many judges in this country that would do anything else uh, but put him in jail for what could be the rest of his life. One, one more question for you. We don't have a lot of information in terms of, as I said, like who is cooperating, what this is based off of. Um, but in a federal case like this, maybe in a racketeering case like this, as I said, they're not, they're not trying him with forced labor crimes. They're not trying him for kidnapping. They don't have to prove that beyond a... I mean, I guess they have to prove it in order to prove the racketeering case, but he's not being charged with that. There's been a number of people who have asserted claims against him dating back years. So past the statute of limitations on on, uh, criminal charges, Um, assaults, sexual assaults, back from the 90s. 
Can prosecutors, federal prosecutors, use those allegations that might otherwise be time barred in a federal indictment like this? Sure. You know, just consider what happened in in the Cosby case. Uh, Not the trial I had, but the second trial after the hung jury. Um, They tried to introduce evidence of, of other victims that weren't charged, ever charged. And those those crimes were, what, 20, 30 years old. Federal prosecutors um, have the same luxury. There's a rule of evidence, as you probably know, Rule 404B, and a judge will have to conduct a balancing test should the government seek to introduce what we call other crimes evidence. And if it is relevant, if it's probative, if it creates a signature, that's really what you would need here. Signature crimes that mirror almost hauntingly um, the crimes charged here. But they've got to, it, it gets a little difficult when they're older and when they're aged. And um, in, in the federal courts, you know, they usually err on the side of caution and not allow a lot of that evidence. But I guarantee you they're going to be trying to introduce it here. And, and to be clear, not everything that was alleged in those complaints is a part of this. You know, there was an allegation that he was soliciting no minors. Question. And, and that wasn't a part of this. So I imagine prosecutors were kind of key in what was they wanted to use and not. That really shocked me. I really was surprised that I didn't see any accusations involving minors. Um, I had thought that that was going to be the linchpin to this prosecution. So, you know, you're right. If they have that evidence somewhere and witnesses can come in and testify, um, you may see a superseding indictment on, on, on that precisely. Um, maybe they were child, protecting child victims and maybe they just didn't have it. I don't know. But I was really expecting to see that. And, and that would have been a, a death knell for him. Because that's why it was so hard to defend R. Kelly. Right. He couldn't say so, these were sexual, you know, consensual exactly encounters. It. You know, here you made an interesting and go full circle. If you're talking about defending Sean Combs, you have to right, tell this jury one day, listen, this is a different environment. This was parties, people are, it's maybe not a party you went to, but it doesn't make it a crime, right? And that's the, that's what you'd have to argue. Mm. And just to go full circle here, defending um, a Sean Combs, that is a different kind of beast than defending John Smith, right? When you're defending somebody that high profile, accused of, you know, not every day that somebody would be charged with allegedly engaging in freak off sessions and having people set up the hotel rooms and bring all the, the lubricant and all these things. It's really disgusting stuff. So how do you communicate that to a jury one day and say, listen, you know, my client is like anybody else. He's uh, innocent until proven guilty, but he's different, right? Yeah. You know, it, defending celebrities is, is really, really difficult. Put Simpson aside for a second. Um, it, it really is a difficult chore, particularly when you have to swallow, um, the obvious here, he, he, he's acting horribly. He's on videotape, you know, beating women up. Um, you've got firearms, you've got drugs, you've got horrific behavior. Juries don't empathize with people that make millions and billions of dollars getting away with stuff. So um, it, 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 it's, it's a difficult case for people who have that kind of wealth and money and opportunity to live a decent life. So juries, right. uh, you know, at least in my experience, again, put Simpson aside for a second because that was a murder case and that was, you know, maybe maybe he didn't do it. But when you've got bad conduct like this and they're a celebrity, it's it's not a fun place to be. And look, yeah, I, I you know, I would say just to end with, with this, it's, it's exciting from a legal point of view to see how this progresses. There's a number of different legal yep. issues, but I, you know, I've read these cases from the very beginning and you know, these allegations are horrific. And I I said this before when I was on air that, you know, this is a step in the, for even people, for the victims in this case, or the witnesses in this case, the alleged victims, you know, this is, they would say a step in the right direction, right? But this also has to be really tough for them because now they might have to testify. This is being amplified and this is not going to be easy for the people who are involved. Um, this is, and this is a reason why a lot of people don't come forward. I mean, one of the, Damien Williams was asked, how come this, he was never charged before? Well, maybe people didn't feel comfortable coming uh, forward before. And look, Sean Combs is innocent until proven guilty. But if these allegations are true, I also have to think how difficult this must be for the people who are involved. I couldn't put it any better. I couldn't yep. put it any better. As, 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 as has been said many times. Who's his attorney? I, I like his demeanor. 
It looked like a nigga who would defend the mob boss. What's his name? I want to follow him. His name his name is uh Brian Mana. You know my favorite attorney still favorite defense attorney still uh my boy Bradford Cohen, but yeah, this thing look like he's a it's like a mob boss type of guy right here. I wanna what's his Instagram? I'm finna follow this motherfucker. Is this him? No. Hey, if let me know what's his Instagram. I wanna follow him. Okay. All right. You know, for le real legitimate victims, uh, sometimes they're they're raped a second time at a trial. So, yep. There you go. Stay well, Brian. Thank. Okay. Um. By the way, just to let everybody know, I'm I'm trying to be impartial here. I'm I'm, I'm not. You know, I, I want to be very you know, open and honest with y'all. I'm not sticking up for Diddy or nothing like that. But I I don't want to try to railroad him. I I know we've we've gone with narratives that he's already guilty. Shit, I think he's kind of guilty, right? But but it's like I also want to be a little bit fair. So don't think if I show anything that is maybe complimentary of him, that's not me riding for him. I'm just letting you know, okay? I just don't want to be very biased, okay? Um, that being said, I seen a post that was kind of going a little bit of viral. Someone is defending him. So again, this is not my opinion. This is someone else. Spilt liquor on my ground. It's like mad sticky. Okay. I'll, I'll read what this person said. It looked like some people agreed with him. It says, I uh, just read the Diddy indictment with a travesty of justice. The charge is basically that he got women to have sex in freak offs with male prostitutes that he liked to watch. Drugs were involved. He allegedly lured them with promises of romantic relationships and help with their careers as if these are crimes. They were basically girlfriends. He threatened to cut off. The indictment keeps talking about psychological ma manipulation and emotional abuse. Nowhere does it include any kind of non-consensual activity. The indictment keeps saying he ensured the compliance of women with drugs, but gives no indication he forced anyone to take them. What's confusing is that the men were prostitutes here and how the feds are charging him with sex trafficking, but the male prostitutes were not abused. Now, again, uh, I mean, that's kind of a valid point. If we're saying that the people, but, but we're not sure if the, the, the feds are only saying the male prostitutes were sex trafficked. I, I think they were saying everybody's sex trafficked because again, Diddy had multiple places, LA, Miami, New York. He was going everywhere and having freak offs and flying people in at times. Not only prostitutes, but anyway, let me keep reading. So they combined the men being prostitutes with the bad treatment of the female girlfriends to create a sex trafficking charge full of salacious details. The indictment does allege he assaulted women, and if so, he could be charged with physical assault. But that's not what they're doing here. Freak offs do not make you a sex trafficker. This is a ridiculous abuse of government power. Um, this is the full indictment. We've already went through this or not really fully went through it, but what do you think about that? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, Bradford Cole might be on here shortly. You know, he said he was in transit. He's moving back to, or going back to a location that would be able to, to get on stream. We don't know if we'll be able to get him. However, um, we did have something more hold on give me a second oh oh yeah okay so i read that where is the other thing that i wanted to like oh this taking selfies not knowing the legal hammer that was about to come down on him these are the last photos and video of Sean Combs in New York right before he was arrested and charged with stomach-churning crimes. A case his attorney insists Diddy will win. He's going to fight this with uh, all of his energy and all of his might. Combs faced the judge inside this federal courthouse in New York just hours after authorities laid out their case in a shocking 14-page indictment. Kim, how are you doing this morning? We were there as some of Diddy's kids arrived. Combs pleaded not guilty in court. 
And now we're going inside the explosive document, alleging Combs abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Prosecutors claim that abuse was verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual. Combs can be seen grabbing Ventura and throwing her to the ground. The indictment specifically references this surveillance footage uncovered by CNN showing Combs assaulting his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in 2016. He offered this apology just days later. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. And the legal papers mirror multiple lawsuits filed against Diddy in the past year, accusing him of engaging in prostitution, narcotics offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Diddy had also been seen in Central Park just hours before his arrest. He had arrived in New York a couple of weeks ago, specifically expecting the indictment would be handed down. He came here to, to surrender uh, at a time agreeable to the U.S. Attorney's Office and then they, they arrested him last night. The court papers also reveal new details about the raids carried out in March. One here at his home in California, the other in Florida. Diddy's ex, Misa Hilton, posted the surveillance video from inside his Holmby Hills mansion to Instagram. It references electronic incriminating recordings Diddy allegedly made of what are being called freak-offs, elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged and directed for his own pleasure and as collateral to silence his victims. As alleged, the freak off sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. Thousands of items used in those freak offs were seized in those military style coast to coast raids. It could cost the billionaire hip hop mogul everything. He faces life in prison, and prosecutors are asking for him to forfeit any property or assets used in the commission of these alleged crimes. He could also face additional charges. Prosecutors showed pictures of the weapons and ammunition taken during the raids, including a drum magazine and AR 15s. We are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. I expect a, a long battle with a good result for Mr. Combs. Okay. Um, yeah. Fucking crazy. Um, where, where, where's the video I was trying to find? Is it this? No, 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 no. We're going to get back to this. A it really? Ooh, yes. We're going to play this. So there's a legal expert who's going to be trying to break this down and we get it. Um, real quick, really quickly. I'm sorry. Uh, yo, for all the people who who just caught merch, I just want to give y'all a shout out real, really quickly. Yo, Christopher, thank you for the um. You cop like two items, most you cop three items. Thank you, Bubakar. I never heard a name like that, but salute to you. You cop four items. Raheem, my boy, cop two. Hansel, cop one. Um, T one C three. Everyone knows every time Diddy's name comes up in something, it's always some freaky issue by the C man. Now, in what's new, you feel me? Now, new information is coming out. Diddy lost a lawsuit where he essentially owes a hundred something uh million dollars. That person, I'm not gonna lie, bro, you're never seeing that money. It's sad to say. <clears throat> You're never ever seeing that money ever. Um Yeah. Is is the diddler. You're never seeing that money. Got some of the best lawyers in the world. Um he's a billionaire still supposedly. You feel me? He's liquidating his assets now. Selling houses and doing all that. But bro, you're not seeing any money like Diddy's the only reason he won the case because Diddy just never went to court. That's it. But it's a boy big act news. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let me know how you guys feel about everything. And I'm out.